Good day everyone. Welcome to Prayer Watch and thank you for joining us today. Let us now come to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, our Father in heaven, we bless your holy name on this day that you have made. We thank you for the opportunity to once again come to your word, listen, and reflect upon you with the help and the light of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh God, for counting us worthy to come before you because of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be with us, Father, as we read and reflect upon your message for us today. And we pray, Lord, that this will lead us to understand you, your plan for the world, and to obey you. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of prayer that enables us to commune with you wherever we may be, because you are always with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 122. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Praise God for his wonderful words of life for all of us. May 14 marks a very important milestone in the life of Israel, and that is their 75th year of establishment as a modern state. And uh, as proclaimed by their first Prime Minister, Ben Gurion, we qualify it as the modern state of Israel because obviously there is an ancient Israel that we know of from the Bible. For one, we read that God promised Abraham a land that his descendants would claim as their own. In Psalm 122, David asked for the readers to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Of course, we know that Jerusalem is in Israel. But that prayer is just as relevant today as it was in his time. Throughout his, its history, Jerusalem had been besieged and conquered by foreign enemies, its temple destroyed by the Babylonians, and then totally razed to the ground by the Romans in 70 AD. And in modern times, Israel had been constantly at war with its Arab uh, neighbors, and the latest being new attacks from Lebanon and from the Gaza Strip. Particularly, clashes in Jerusalem are again at a heightened level these days. Some 20 years ago, the Iranian president declared that Israel should be wiped off the face of the earth. And Israel today is taking very seriously the threat of a major offensive by Iran as Iran escalates its capacity to produce nuclear weapons to be used against them. Psalm 122 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. How can we pray for Jerusalem, for Israel? First of all, let us have a quick look at where Jerusalem is. Here in the map of Israel, we see a differently colored portion above the middle part, which is called the West Bank. This area is considered by UN or the United Nations and other countries as part of the state of Palestine. The West Bank stretches across the eastern border of Israel along the west banks of the Jordan River. Hence, 
that is how it received its name. And, of course, all the way down to most of the Dead Sea. Jerusalem is within the, the area called West Bank. And, of course, we know that it is considered to be the holiest sites of three of the biggest religions in the world, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. This also explains the spiritual dimension of the conflict. Now, the biblical Israel was much larger than the area of Israel today. In Exodus 23, God described the boundaries of the land to be from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea and from the desert to the Euphrates River. And so ancient Israel's territory includes the modern-day Israel, Palestine, which is uh, the West Bank, Lebanon in the north, Jordan to the east, and Syria in the northeast of uh, Israel. Now, it took hundreds of years for the conquest of the land to be completed. From the time of Joshua in 1300 BCE to the conquest of Jerusalem by King David sometime in the early 10th century. So, Aside from the decades-old conflict with the Palestinians in Israel, how is Israel's relations with its neighbors today? Well, between Israel and Syria, there are no diplomatic relations between the two countries. Israel and Syria have been in a state of war since the establishment of the state of Israel and Syria has never recognized Israel and Israel regards Syria as an enemy state. Now between um, Lebanon and Israel, like Syria, there are no diplomatic relations between Israel and Lebanon and, uh, in fact, Israel treats Lebanon as an enemy state. Now, the Hezbollah in um, Lebanon, an Islamist political party and militant group, have attacked Israel in the past as well as in recent times. There is another Palestinian territory called the Gaza Strip in southwest, on the uh, southwest side of Israel. It is the home of Hamas, a Sunni Islamic fundalist, fundamentalist, militant, and nationalist organization. And it is also one of the Palestinian territories, two major political parties. Now, the Hamas has launched attacks against Israel as far back as 30 years ago and continues to this day. And so we can say that by and large, Israel has always been at war with its neighbors. So how can we, Christians, pray for Jerusalem and by extension for the whole land of Israel? The historical and political issues involved in the modern Israel uh, conflict are quite complicated and goes and go all the way back to more than a hundred years ago. Perhaps that is something that you can explore or study more in detail to fully understand and grasp the reasons why the Palestinians behave this way and as well as why the, Israel, the Israelis have also been defending themselves. Now we must realize that to pray for Jerusalem and Israel means to pray for its people. There are at least three major uh, people groups in uh, Israel today. <clears throat> there are Jews that comprise about 74% 70, and uh, Muslims 
2% are Christians and the rest of the 6% are of other faiths, all living together in the land of Israel. And so to pray for Jerusalem and for Israel means to pray for them regardless of their faith and even their race, shall, um, ancestry and background. And so we can pray for the salvation of the non-believers. The Bible says that true peace is found in Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. So, peace with the one true God is what they need. In the original Hebrew word for peace used in these verses, it is characterized by quiet tranquility, being at rest, Spoken especially of one who enjoys quiet prosperity. The essential idea is that of quietness or rest. And the meaning here is that those who love Zion as well will have their peace. Most especially, let us pray for the Jews, that they may recognize Jesus Christ as their Messiah, since only 2% of the Jews in Israel are Christians or uh, what they call Messianic Christians, those who believe that Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah. Jesus Christ wept for his very own countrymen who rejected him during his earthly life. David, the psalmist, knew that at the heart of peace and prosperity, is the reverence and love for God. And that necessarily, it is faith in Jesus Christ, whom he sent for the salvation of those who believe. That is going to truly give anyone, anybody, the true peace and prosperity that we all need and long for. Now, though externally we see the political and economic struggles, Ultimately, it is the spirit at rest with God that brings about true peace and prosperity to a person and to a nation. We should also pray for the church to persevere in their mission. Jesus commissioned his disciples to be the bearers of the gospel. So let us pray that the minority Christians, the small minority Christians in Israel, will remain the light of truth that pierces the darkness of ignorance and sin, and that they may be salt that will bring love and compassion for the people, especially those who are victims of war, of conflict, of prejudice, regardless of their beliefs and political affiliations. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this week and the coming days are the most opportune time for us to remember Israel in prayer. God had a unique mission for his people, for this people whom he has called. And the message of salvation was first given to them. We owe a great spiritual debt of gratitude to the Jews, to Israel. And so included in David's prophetic prayer was a prayer of blessing for those who love Israel. And I believe that those who love Israel will pray for the land, the people living there, and for the house of the Lord, even we, the church, who are the spiritual house of the Spirit of God, that God's blessings of peace and prosperity may also be upon us as we bless Israel with our prayers. May God give us this desire and this awareness of how important 
our prayers for Israel could be now and of course for the rest of the years to come. Amen. Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, may his praise be found in you. City of our God Their salvation was poured out for you The atoning of the Lord Once your streets were filled with joy Branches raised up high Shouting, blessed be the Holy One Yeshua Tadona Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem Let us pray. Almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of those who believe in Jesus Christ, whom you sent for our forgiveness and salvation, we come to you, O Lord, and cry out to you because we know 
that there is so much strife and conflict right now, both political, social, and most of all spiritual conflict in the land that you have carved out for your people, in the land where you said our very own Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would return to when he comes again. Dearest Lord, we pray first of all that the church will arise and will realize that their prayers will make a difference because you have, through your servant David, called upon all to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank you, Lord, for giving us an awareness of your great love for this land, for your people, for the church, for the people of the world, so much so that you sent Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Lord, I pray that as we continue to participate in this worldwide prayer for Israel, Lord, we pray that you will be able to also make us aware of the history of the many peoples involved in the conflict and there gain an understanding of the um, situation, the pitiful situation of humanity, especially because we are sinful as we are and that we need you. O Lord, for our salvation. Thank you, Lord, for calling us, especially we, your people, we, the believers of Jesus Christ, to participate in your grand plan of salvation for the world. Lord, please place upon our hearts the desire and the urgency to pray, to pray for everyone, especially Israel, at this crucial time of their history. We trust in you, O God, that you are already working in all things for the good of those who love you, for the good of those who love Israel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Until we see each other again. Shalom.